You might be able to see the pole behind me. Yeah, can you see that? That's part of the green screen. Yes, we're doing green screening in DaVinci Resolve today. So welcome back to Creator Reality, my friend. I'm John, and that's part of my green screening setup. It is the Valera Creator 95. I don't even know if it's sold anymore, but basically you need a solid material, solid lighting, and a little bit of technique, and you can get some pretty good results using DaVinci Resolve when you're green screening. For my setup, I have a softbox over here. It's a Mountain Dog deal I got years ago. I've got way off frame over there and an LED light panel that I did a video on. Link above! And then the Valera Creator 95 green screen. So let's set that up. Never quite sure if it's gonna fall down on me or not. But as you can see, we have a little bit of shadows, well, mostly over here, and then down in that corner. So that's why I have the two lights set up because it's going to basically make the keying easier. That's what we're gonna do as a keying. And if my hand goes off here, obviously that's gonna be an issue. My hand got cut off, oh no, I just have an arm and a stump now. Just work with me here. We're gonna fix most of that and I'll show you some techniques on fixing the rest of it. Let's dive into DaVinci Resolve and I'll show you what we're working with. So here we are in DaVinci Resolve and I've got the intro to this video and then I've got the raw clip here that we're gonna work with. And before I even get started, I know the intro wasn't pro level and I probably won't get you to pro level. What I will get you is enough knowledge to refine things and refine your setup and avoid most of the gotchas that frankly, I could still see in the intro, but we're gonna work around quite a lot of that. So we have our clip, there's no color grading on it or anything yet, but we wanna key out this green, right? So we're gonna click on our fusion icon, which will turn this into a fusion clip. We have our media in one and our media out one, the before and the after. First thing we wanna do is with media in one selected, press shift spacebar and type in Delta. I like to use the Delta key here. And if you're asking why I don't do this in the color tab or color page, I don't find the results to be nearly as good. As usual in Resolve, there's a bunch of ways to do it, but I choose to do all my green screening in the Fusion page. Nothing's changed because we haven't done a key yet. We need a key. So we're gonna grab our dropper, come over here, and you'll see as I move around, that gray checkerboard pattern changes, right? It's dark there, it's lighter here. We wanna pick sort of a midpoint, so right about there I think is good and that should green screen out most of everything. The next thing we wanna do is if you have a green screen that doesn't cover your entire frame, you wanna create a garbage mat. So let's add that. And we're gonna drag a polygon in. We don't want to click on Delta Keyer 1 and click on the curved polygon because it'll connect it to the wrong place. Control Z to undo. We wanna come down here. This one says garbage mat. That's what we wanna to connect to and nothing's gonna happen, but we're gonna click on Polygon 1, and we're gonna click from just inside of our green screen here to just inside the green screen there, to just over there, and once up there, and then close it right there. It looks really weird, but trust me, just go with it. We're gonna refine this just a little bit so that it's closer to the edge. We may have to refine it later, but we're gonna click around and make sure that our green screen is on the outside of the polygon. Then we go back to the Delta Keyer 1, come over to Mask, see Garbage Mat. We're gonna invert, ta-da! Now we can come up here and fit, and you'll see that I've cut off my hand, and I've done some other things. Here's where things get a little bit tricky. You can actually fix this by hand, doing a thing called rotoscoping, which I will show you the start of, but it's really a very time intensive process. And if you can avoid going around your green screen, unlike me, you will have better results. In my case, I have a very confined space here and a very small green screen that doesn't cover but half my frame. Sometimes it's an issue, sometimes it's not. If I'm just doing a, a pop-up B-roll where I wanna show up and explain something, I'm already zooming myself out and it just fits, right? I'm not doing a bunch of wild gyrations off frame. Anyway, let's go do that real quick. So we'll grab another polygon and we'll connect that up to our effect mask. And then we can 
draw a line around my fingers, we're good to go. We can add that in and you'll see that that's green screened out. Back in our Delta here, we want to click this right arrow, go to settings and apply mask inverted. Ta-da! Now it's fixed it and with polygon 2 selected, I can control mouse wheel to zoom in and we can add another point in our polygon and move it up and over. And you can refine these however you see fit to get just the right mask. This is not a rotoscoping tutorial. This is a green screening tutorial. But when I come back to fit and I click away from all this, you can see that now you can see my hand, even though it extended past the edge of that. But I am going to backspace to get rid of that so that we focus on just the green screening today. I can also uncheck apply mask inverted. But that's how you get around that issue, right? but we have these shadows and everything. We need to get rid of some of those. The best way to fix these shadows is to not have them in the first place. So I've upped the brightness of my softbox. I moved my LED light panel much closer over here. It's kind of blinding actually. And thus I have good separation between me and the green screen and there's much less shadows. There's still some in the lower corners, but if I move myself up in the frame, they're no longer an issue. These are the things you do in a confined space with limited budgets. So let's click our left arrow. We did our key. Now we come into mat and we can change our threshold. And you'll see, see this taupe area or beige? As I drag the threshold up, it gets uh, more transparent. So it's more in line with the rest of the checkerboard pattern. And if you go real far, it'll get rid of all these shadows down here. But if I zoom in on my head here, you can see that my hair is starting to get transparent. So I wanna back that out and then right about there, see how it's getting beige or brown up there? We wanna get rid of that and get rid of just a little bit of fringe and now we're good. So we're at 0.239 and then when we come down to this corner again, you'll see that we still have some shadow. This is why lighting is so important. And I use the lights that I have and I got it close enough. I make videos for YouTube, they're not for Hollywood. So if I had a Hollywood set, I would have Hollywood lights and I would have Hollywood lighting, but I'm doing YouTube and it's just not gonna matter that much. If it's really important to you, you will buy more lighting. I might buy more lighting, but this is about as good as we're gonna get here. I could drag this up to about 3.94, which gets rid of a little bit more but it really starts to make the edges of my hair transparent. So I will control Z to undo and control. Yeah, it's just a very fine choice. I'm using control shift Z to redo by the way. So control shift Z, oh, let's zoom in real far. Look, we've got it right there. Control Z, control shift Z. And we'll just go back and forth. Look at that. It's such a fine difference, but you can see it. And then we'll undo that change. So we've got this shadow over here. Now, if we really wanted, we could come over to key and we could drag our green and we could drag it right here. But this immediately starts to make my hair look weird. Yeah, I'm not really a fan of that. Control mouse wheel, zoom in. It's really transparent. So I will control Z to undo and it's pretty good, but we have some spill here and then we've got some green over here. So what we need to do is go into fringe and leave spill method alone. Uh, I'm going to bring this back to fit and you'll see that this looks okay. But if I click on rare, doesn't do much. Medium doesn't do much. Well done. And then burn. And, and I don't like that. But what we need to do is control mouse wheel, zoom into my shoulder here where we got a little bit of spill from that green screen reflecting light onto me. And what we're going to do is we're going to take green magenta down and you see it fixes that just a little bit. It brings control mouse wheel, zoom in really far. We're at 623%. If it's, it's got a little bit of a green tinge to it, but if I bring this down, it kind of gives it that purple tinge. And you can play with this a little bit, get it fine, looking right where you want it to. And that's gonna be pretty good. Now our green screen has been keyed out. We can go ahead and apply our color effects, et cetera, et cetera. So what we need to do is go back to the edit page, hold alt and click on our video clip just to select the video part, drag it up. And I've got a free beach scene. I'm gonna alt drag to duplicate and then stretch it to fit here. And you'll see that 
it looks pretty good. You've got a little bit of an edge over here on the right-hand side. And of course, I'm getting cut off over there on the left-hand side, but I don't look great. So with our clip selected, we click the color tab and there's only the one base node in there. And then I've got a grade that I've saved and I'll just drag it onto here and drop it and it looks better already. Control Z, Control Shift Z, right? It, all it's doing is in here, we're changing the temperature and the tint a little bit. And then in this one, it's disabled. And then on this one, we're adding a vignette. So that fixed most of the color. And what's interesting here is that for some reason, I was getting kind of a green cast in my footage. So let's do a quick color correction for that. So to do that, we're going to right click an empty space, click add node. We want a corrector. And then I'm going to hold shift and drag it up until that line turns yellow, drop it. And now it's in line with everything else. See, it's right there. So with our new node selected, I'm going to come to offset and down here is green. So we want to go the opposite of that. We're just going to drag up just a little bit and that's going to bring in a little bit better color, I think. I think that looks slightly better. Back on our edit page, we're good to go. And if you notice here, I've played back this section of the clip and it's generated the render cache for it. And if you scrub through, it's not gonna do anything, but for some reason tonight, Resolve is deciding to only render the stuff that I'm playing. So in the background, it's playing right there and it's doing the render cache. If you wanna save a bunch of space on your hard drive, click on your clip, right click on it, and then come up to Render Cache Fusion Output, change it from Auto to Off. And then when you play it back, it will not generate the render cache for that clip. And in however many seconds, DaVinci Resolve will figure out that it doesn't need those files and it'll get rid of the blue bar. Whatever, no big deal. I mentioned earlier that I was gonna show you how to combine Magic Mask 2.0 with the green screen keying out. And the reason I do this is to not have to rotoscope things because rotoscoping is painful, it takes forever. Magic Mask 2.0, which I did a tutorial on over here, is not without its faults. But in this case, while I was editing this video, it worked really well, so I wanted to show that. So let's dive back into DaVinci Resolve and I'll show you how to do that now. Here we have the timeline for this video, and you can see that I made copies of my source clips here, and then I just added magic masks. So if you notice, there's a fusion icon right here. This is the green screen footage, but this footage here is the uh, blank footage, the raw footage, if you will. But if I go into my color tab, you can see that I added a fifth node. So if I rearrange these and we move them around, and then we click on this one and it's it's popping up red because I've got my show overlay on. There it is. But all I did was I added a dot at, at a certain point. Let's see, there it is. So there's my blue dot. I added it on my right hand. Yeah, that's my right hand. So it masked it out for this clip and I'm good to go. For the other clip, it was the same thing, but it was my left hand. So if I find the dot for this one, it's right there. I put a dot on my finger and it masked that out. So we got everything masked out on this one side, but not the other side, and then vice versa on the other clip. And then back in our edit page, I just layered this over top of everything else, and I even put the text and the arrow underneath of that. So pretty slick stuff. Um, it just kind of helps sell the effect, because you can see here, I've got without Magic Mask 2.0, and then I've got with Magic Mask 2.0, and I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. So anyway, that's all I got for you. Hopefully now you can get started green screening in DaVinci Resolve. If you have questions, as always, drop them in the comment section below. If there's anything else you wanna see me cover in Resolve, also let me know in the comment section. And I thank you for watching. I hope you're having a great day. Until next time, go check out this video, and I'll see you there. John out.